Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to our 100th video on ProjectEuler.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at problem number 100, Arranged Probability. The problem reads, if a box contains 21 colored discs composed of 15 blue and 16 red, and the two discs were taken at random, it can be seen that the probability of taking two blue discs is equal to one half. We have 15 divided by 21 times 14 divided by 20. The next such arrangement for which there is exactly 50% chance of taking two blue discs at random is a box containing 85 blue discs and 35 red discs. By finding the first arrangement to contain over 10 to the 12th power discs in total, determine the number of blue discs that the box would contain. So let's think about how we can implement a solution for this. The brute force way would be to iterate over different values on the number line and try to see if we can match this property in one way or another where picking two will equal one half as a probability. That type of approach would take a long time to calculate because there'd be a lot of wasted computation. So instead of doing that, I took a look into the math behind it. And what we see here is we have 15 divided by 21. And then the very next statement is 14 divided by 20. So we could write that as A divided by B times A minus 1 divided by B minus 1 is equal to 1 half. So going into the code, I have some notes on the analysis which I took. So looking over the notes, I'm going to call A the number of blue disks. B is the total count. So we have A divided by B times A minus 1 divided by B minus 1 is equal to 1 half. And we can rewrite that as a squared minus a divided by b squared minus b is equal to 1 half. And if we rewrite it again, we'll get something that looks like a Diophantine equation. 2a squared minus 2a minus b squared minus b is equal to 0. And that looks kind of like our Pell's equation, which we worked on a few times in a few previous videos. So this one is a little bit different. Before we had x squared minus d times y squared is equal to 1. But this time we have 2a squared minus 2a minus b squared minus b is equal to 0. So we can't use the same exact approach we took before. Just one note, we could also rewrite this as b squared plus b if we take it out of the parentheses. So from there, I opened this in Wolfram Alpha to see what I could do to manipulate it further to see if there's any way we could make it more usable for coding purposes. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So it gives us some data here. It gives us the input, a plot, a few alternative forms. But the interesting part that's very useful for us is we get a function which will give us integer solutions. So this is perfect for what we need. We need integer solutions for A, which is the number of blue disks. So we get this kind of complicated looking thing here, but it's actually not that bad. There's a few repeated things. 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2. And it follows a basic pattern here. So I, what I've done is in the code, I've implemented this as an algorithm. And instead of using B, I've used this version of B where we can calculate it given the value of A. So I have some intermediate values here on the class itself. So we only have to calculate them once. First one, we're just storing square root of two inside of a variable. Then I'm storing this three minus two times the square root of two and three plus that in their own variables. So coming into the actual calc nth A, We'll take n as an input number. Then I'll make these little helper variables here where we take the intermediate values and put them to the power of n as we see in the equations here. Then we'll have calc is 1 8 times this quantity here. I noticed that I guess they have a few different variations. The first input doesn't give us quite exactly what we're looking for, but if we multiply it by negative one and then add one, we get the exact A values we need. So that's what I'm doing here. So corresponding to this negative two times three minus the square root of two, et cetera, et cetera, I've put that here. Then we're rounding it because we're gonna get some slight precision errors, but rounding it, we get the value we're looking for and add one to it. Then calc from B. I'm taking this value here, b is 1 half times the square root of a squared, etc., etc., from there. So putting it all together, we have our limit of 10 to the 12th power, as they show in the problem here. Then what we'll do is we'll iterate over different values of n. So we'll start with n is equal to 1, iterate until we have some exit condition, and keep incrementing by 1. So I have the blue count is calc nth a. The red count is the calc b from a. Then we're checking if both of those values together are greater than the limit, we'll return the blue count. Quick correction, what we have there is red count. That's actually the total count. So when we calc b from a, we're actually getting the total count as b. So the if condition should say, if total count is greater than limit, then return blue count. So let's go ahead and run this, see if we get the correct answer, and if so, how long it takes to calculate. So we get this answer here in one millisecond, which is very fast performance. Let's see if this answer is correct. 
Okay, that is the correct answer. So we can accept the implementation that we have here. So we've finished our goal of doing all of the first 100 Project Euler problems. So it's definitely a good milestone we have here. And we can see here that you've given us a little bit of a award for that. So I'm going to make a video shortly with a follow-up on the experience, some of the lessons learned, that sort of thing, as well as some advice for other people trying to go through the first 100 problems as I've just done. And I'm also going to integrate this with the website, but I'll make a follow-up video to go in that in much more detail. For now, if you made it to the end, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for more Bite This videos. Thanks for watching.